Boom. What's up, guys? Welcome to the live. So in this live, we make MLS offers live. We just bang them out one after the other. Boom, boom, boom. Our goal is to get five MLS offers out in the next hour and a half. It's currently 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we will run until 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and our goal is to get five offers out in an hour and a half. So let's dive right into it. All right. First thing I'm going to do is share my screen with you guys so that you get to see what I have going on. Okay, so I have a bunch of people already queued up in my CRM, which I am going to just start calling. So Michael Danchucks, look like I've had this person in here before. It looks like I've made an offer on him before. So we're actually going to just check in and see like, hey, what's going on with this offer? So let me reach out to him. I'm going to pull it up on Zillow first. We'll see where are we at um, 194 days 860 and we need it for no i think we put this one under contract before and we realized that it wasn't the right price i'm going to skip this one for now because that's kind of like a follow-up and that one requires more thought okay so next one we have is lance um Jackfish Bonita Springs. So I'm going to check this one out on Zillow real quick. Okay, it looks like a shell of a property. Um, 76 days on Zillow, 56 views, so it's obviously overpriced. That's okay. We'll give them a call and we will make an offer. Looks like we've actually offered on this one before. Um, they want four ninety nine. Lance. Hey, good morning, Lance. It's Nathan. How you doing? I'm good, Nathan. How you doing? I'm quite well. Hey, I um, I was sifting through some stuff on the MLS, and I came across that Jackfish property again. I just wanted to see what's uh what's going on with it. Like, are the sellers starting to come down, and they're ready to move move on with this one? Or, I mean, she's just gonna sit and wait and. Take it off the market if it doesn't move and just hold it for a couple of years. And But no, she's not going to give it away. Of course. Of course, don't she give away your property. She doesn't know anything on it. Uh. Doesn't need. But, you know, she has a number and that's where she's at. Well, I know we were pretty close last time, you know. Um, what did I need it at? Um, I needed this one at 415, so we're not too far off. Is she... Is she willing to take something like that now? Mm -hmm. I mean, the last time, I think it cost you too much money to do what you want to do, bring the elevation up and all that. Mm -hmm. That's why you didn't go through. Mm -hmm. but has anything changed in that aspect? Or? Okay, you're ringing a bell. Yeah. Oh, this was the one with the elevation problem. Mm, Correct. Right. Let me let me talk to a friend because I had a friend that told me um, we could potentially get a get around that just by, you know, a, an appraiser that will look the other way. Um, let me let me see what I can do on that one. It, is is the seller willing to take something that low? Like, all right, what where are they at on that? I mean, she doesn't. I I don't know. I mean, you know. I don't know her bottom number, but she looks at offers. So we do get offers, so. Okay, okay. Let me let me send it to underwriting again. Um, we're gonna we're gonna run the numbers based on a teardown, um, as well as um, definitely call a teardown. Buddy. What's that? I would say, I would say run them more as a teardown. Okay. Okay, we'll do. We'll do. And do you have anything else as well that we can make you an offer on? Not unless you want to pay list price on 
all my other listings. Well, if, <laughs> if list price is a good price, then I will. But if list price uh, is more uh, than. Uh, yeah. No, nah, okay. nothing really. Okay. No worries. Well, yeah, let me get to work. Let me run my numbers on this one again. Uh, I'll run it as a teardown. I'll speak with my friend and see if, you know, he's actually legit when it comes to that little workaround that, that we have. And I'll give you a call in a little bit and let you know where I'm at. Sounds good, Nathan. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lance. Take care. Bye. Bye. I pissed that. I just remembered. I pissed that agent off so bad a couple months ago. I locked it up and then I... Bro, I forgot that I had it locked up. And I didn't submit EMD. And it was, and then I realized at the end of IP, I'm like, oh shit, I had this one under contract. <laughs> and, I, and I called him and I'm like, yeah, this one's not going to work. He's like, bro, what the hell? Like you're, you're, you're at the end. It was, yeah, it was kind of a, a shit show. Um, okay, so let me, I'm going to delete all this info. Um, so my underwriter doesn't use it. Okay. So I'm going to add a note here that says run numbers as a teardown update. And I'm going to send it to underwriting. Okay. And then we're going to track our KPIs. So that's one MLS listing called, one agent conversation. Cool. What's up, Marcella? Good to have you back. Okay, next one. Grace Willis. We're going to pull it up on Zillow real quick. Okay, it says that it's pending. 144 days, 12 saves. Where is this one located? Bellevue Heights? Nah, bro. This is in the middle of nowhere. I don't want it. We're going to abandon location. Update. I'm going to click refresh. Okay, next one, Pamela Olson. Southwest Ranches. I like Southwest Ranches. These are like bougie luxury homes. Damn, this thing is nice. This one I know for sure is going to be a little bit hard to comp, but let's run it either way. Hello? Hello? Yes, hey, this is Pamela. Hey, good, mo good morning, Pam. My name is Nathan. I'm calling about that listing that you have on uh, 178th Ave. Uh, can you give me the address? Yes, it's it's 4900 Southwest 178th Ave. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm interested in it. I'm actually looking for some luxury flips. Um, could you help me understand this project a little bit better? Yes, this is a 4.8, uh, even say 4.6, but it is 4.8 um, um, uh, land. Okay. He just changed the roof of the property now. Okay, Actually, new he, new roof, a brand new roof. It's a tile, it's a special tile. It's curved. So, also the, um, 
we are not receiving offers less than 2.2. I mean, it has to be now 2.3. Oh my goodness. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, so hold on, yeah. wait a minute. That he, he the seller values that roof at four hundred thousand dollars. No, 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 no. We are not receiving offers now for two point three million. Mm. Uh, because we have offers, we have offers, uh, even without the roof for two point two. Wow. Why don't you guys take it? Because her attorney was on vacation they're running it by the attorney for is this like a probate no is that just he doesn't do anything except if the attorney um approves okay okay i, so the attorney I, was know, I, I, don't, I have a meeting today yeah okay um honestly i don't think i'd be your buyer for anything over 1.9 for sure um does oh that yeah that then me? no you are not <laughs> okay so i should just move on to the next one Okay. Do you have anything else? Any other any other fixer uppers, luxury flips? I, I'd love something similar to this. No. No. Okay. Okay. No worries. Well, thank you so much. You have a wonderful day, Pam. You too. Bye. Bye. Okay. So I'm not even going to get caught up on that one because good luck wholesaling a property over list. Um, so I'm going to say not accepting any thing under 2.2 because they did the roof list price is 1.9 okay so that one is going to get abandoned bye pam Pleasure speaking with you. All right. So let's see. Cliff Glanson. I feel like I have a bunch of them from Cliff. Let me uh let me search. Cliff. Yeah, I do. Does Cliff ever answer his phone though? Answer his phone. That's why. Okay, let me. I'm gonna DNC Cliff. Don't add leads from Cliff. At Benjamin. Don't. Please don't. Please don't. Add leads from this guy. He never answers. Okay, and I am going to just straight up abandon every single cliff because I, I was looking through the conversation history. I'm like, God damn, I've called this guy like 10 times and he just never answers his phone. It just infinitely rings. Okay, cool. All right, so on to the next one. Um we're going to do Denise Brown. Looks like I already have information on this one. Oh, it looks like we've put this one under contract before. Um, I wonder if it's still available. Yeah, it is. Okay. 
Is it too early to come back after it? Mm. Eh, I'm going to wait. Um, okay. Next one. I'm going to pull it up on Zillow real quick. Take a look at the photos. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on with it, but looks distressed. Um, ugly bathrooms. Porter House. Okay. Uh, under contract, accepting backup offers, fix and flip. Um, perfect. Don't miss. Okay, cool. Let me call. Let me call. Oh, wrong person. That's Denise. We don't want to call Denise. Edgerton, good morning. Hey, is this Charles? How can I help you? Hey, Charles. My name is Nathan. I'm calling about the property that you listed on Kingsway Circle. Okay, Nathan. What so, about it? Is that one still accepting backups, or are you guys hard on the EMD? Um, I'll tell you. Uh, it's still in backups, but it's... Uh, what is your situation? I'm an investor. I'm looking for another project. Uh, I just wanted to get more information on this before I start running my numbers. There's, there's not many photos. Um, I don't see anything about the age of the roof, AC, water heater, any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't need too much. It's, it's, it sold quickly. Oh, it's it, it it's already closed? No, it's not closed, but I think it's going to close. Um, okay. Can, can you text me your name and your contact information, a business card? Are yeah, you an investor that buys through another broker, buys through yourself as a broker, or buys through me? There's three kinds. Okay, so my options are buys through – sorry, say my – what kind of investor okay. am I limiting myself to? Okay. No, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is what are you limiting yourself to? Do you, do you operate, will you buy it through me or will you buy it through another broker if I tell you about it? Or will you buy it and you're a broker and you buy it yourself? What I'm saying is, do I get the whole commission or do I get half if you buy it? So I, I'll, you know, you bring me a deal, you'll get commission on it. Um, if you bring me a deal from somebody else, you get commission on it. Now, the thing is, is I'm looking for either your listings or upcoming listings or off market listings. You know, if you bring me something on market, odds are I've probably seen it. I know what all investors are looking for. Exactly. But yeah. I will tell you, sometimes I run into some things in a multiple listing system that are listed with somebody that doesn't know what the hell they're doing. I mean, there are a lot of agents out there that don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I say, this is a real good one. If I bring it to you, I want to make sure that you buy it through me. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I try not to make it a habit. Of, like most of the time, when I say yes to things like that, like people just put me on MLS drips, and like I, I, I just straight up will stop replying to those people. But if you actually bring me a gem on market, no problem. But don't, okay. don't, don't send me shit. I won't. I won't put you on a. I will not send you stuff. Okay, but text me your contact information. I will not put you on a list because I know I know how that works. But I do, in fact, I do happen to have something in mind right now. Do you mind a cheapie? Sorry, do I mind, do you mind what? An inexpensive, an inexpensive property. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I'll, you, take, I'll take a cheap one. I'll take an expensive one. What price was that one we were talking about this morning, Sue? Uh, you have it listed for 374 But no, no, I, no, I can no. purchase anything up to a mil. 
And honestly, if it's a good enough deal, I'll figure out where to get the funding Without from for, for any other stuff. Okay, because my wife ran into one this morning. We were talking about it. it was for 260, and it looked like a very interesting opportunity. So Perfect. send me your information. I might send you just that one as long as you say you'll buy it through me. It is listed with another broker. But, yeah, no problem. Um, I'll, okay. I'll buy it through you. Like, I mean, as long as I haven't already put it in my system and like um, called them already, which it's kind of a trust thing. Um, but I will buy it from you if I haven't seen it before. But keep in mind, I do babysit I have, the MLS. I have every investors day. that I trust and trust me, and I have some investors that I don't trust at all. So you know, let's see what let let's see what we can do together. I like the relationship. Okay. For sure, sounds good. Yeah, I, I, I would love to work with you. Um, let me well, fit, let me I'm send you my email years and in the business. buying criteria and whatnot, okay. and and let's let's get it going. I, I need something Thank right you, away. Brother. I'm I'm pretty eager to get my next project. I, I was taking a little bit too long before I started making more calls. I hear you. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you two today. If the other one, if the other one is still available, let me perfect. let me double check on them both. Okay. Perfect. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Take care, Charles. Talk Thank soon. you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Okay, so I'm going to add him um, to the initial drop in. And I'm going to put this one under the um, under contract by others. Pretty much, he's like, yo, we don't need to worry about this one. This one looks like it's going to go through. But I want a relationship with you, so I'm gonna send you something. You cool if I represent you on this one? And it's like, yeah, I'm cool, but I just wanna like set the expectations. You know, if it's something that I've seen, then that's not gonna work. Okay, let's do this one here, Darnell Smith. has been forwarded to an automatic voice Darnell was a little bit inconsiderate last time I spoke with him um, I have some messages here from him wasn't the most polite of an agent okay so we're gonna he he said can I call you later so we're gonna put that as no response we're gonna check that down as an MLS listing called we're gonna move on to the next one 609 Henry. Okay, I'm just looking at this one on Zillow. Ninety days, thirty one saves. Please leave your Okay, I'm going to double dial him. Always double dial. Okay, 
no answer. So what's going to happen is we are going to drag him to the no response category, and it's going to automatically send him a text um, saying, hey, contact first name. I'm calling to make an offer on property address. Can you give me a call back? And then we will move on to the next one, James Nagy. We're going to pull it up on Zillow real quick, take a look at it. Historic district. Needs full updates. Wow, look at that stove. Okay, gotcha. All right, let me call James. Hello. Hey, James. It's Nathan. I'm calling about the property that you listed on uh, Tally Furrow Avenue. Okay. Just wanted to get a couple more details before I started running my numbers on it. Um, am I doing all of the major ticket, the big ticket items on this? Yeah, for rehab. Okay. So does it have original plumbing or what's... Well, I, I guess have no knowledge original. on the plumbing or electrical. Sorry. What was that? I have no knowledge of plumbing or electrical. Okay, gotcha. So I'll just budget for everything. Are there any foundation issues, termite damage, or anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, floors are pretty straight, especially for an old bungalow. Okay. I'm I'm assuming that it's vacant, right? It is. Okay. Cool. Um, and I mean, I'll just be honest with you. The price is is you know a bit of a reach. Is that flexible, or should I just move on to the next one? Probably move on. Move on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, how like how flexible? Like, are, are they like limited? What, what's the I mean, play? Comps, comps put that thing in a low to mid five, so low to mid. It's five. already priced well below market. Hmm. Okay. It just kind of confuses me because like it's thirty five days, only six hundred and thirty four views and twenty four saves. Um. So the market seems like it's saying something let me run my numbers let me see where i'm at and then i'll give you a call and i'll just let you know what my feedback is and um we'll decide if it's something that we should submit how does that sound sound perfect okay awesome thanks james talk soon okay bye. thank you bye take care interesting he really flipped it on me okay so let me take these notes um full rehab all big Ticket items, including plumbing and electrical occupancy vacant motivation. I don't know price, not much wiggle room. Okay, cool. We will send it to underwriting. And we will track our KPIs. That's one call, one convo. And then we will move on to the next one. Refresh this. What's up, Mark? Good morning, Mark. How you doing, bro? Okay, let's call Bill Shirer. Shirer. Sure. All right, we're going to pull this one up on Zillow real quick. Take a look at it. Okay, there's not a whole lot of photos. I'm going to assume that it's dated throughout the entire property. Um,
Hello, this is Bill Scherer, Excel Real Estate. Please leave your name. Okay, we'll double dial. Hello, this is Bill Scherer, Excel Real Estate. Please leave your name and number. Okay, Bill did an answer, so we will put him in the no response category. That'll automatically send him a text, and we will track our KPIs. That's another agent called. And we will move on to the next one, Kelly. Let's grab the address, pop it in Zillow real quick. Check to make sure it's still available. Look at the... Anything about the AC water heater? Okay, so um, the AC is four years old. Anything about the roof? Okay, nothing about the roof. Um, flood zone X. Okay, so AC is four years old. All right, we're going to call her. Hi, this is Kelly Mothershead with Keller Williams Realty. I am sorry that I missed your call, but your call is very important to me. We're going to double dial her. Hi, this is Kelly Mothershead with Keller Williams. No answer, so we are going to send her a text. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag her to the no response category, and my system will automatically send her a text. We'll update our KPIs. So we're at eight MLS listings called four agent conversations. Um, we still haven't gotten any offers out. Um, we have two in underwriting right now, and we will just keep keep plowing through them. Okay, not saying anything about the age of the AC water heater um, or the roof, paneling on the walls, block. Okay, let's call. Porter Homes, this is John. May I help you? Hey, John. This is Nathan. I'm calling about that listing that you have on Ronnie Street. Hey, what's up, Nathan? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. And you? Good, good. Thanks for asking. Awesome. Awesome. I'm glad you're doing good. You uh, you got fixer uppers, so you got what I'm looking for. Yeah, man. That's definitely a fixer upper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I was just about to start running my numbers on it, but I didn't see anything about the age of the roof, AC, water heater, or any of those big ticket items. Do you, do you have yeah. that information? Mm, uh, yeah. I mean, there was roof work done. There's no seller's disclosure. Seller refuses to offer one, unfortunately. Um, there, uh, there's some roof work done uh, a couple of years ago. She hasn't lived there in like two years. It's been kind of like a on and off home for her because she's in California. She, uh, you know, always wanted to keep it over the last couple of years, just in case you want to move back to Jack's, but uh, she's looking like she's going to stay out there. So, um, so that's why it's listed, but, uh, yeah, there was some work done a couple of years ago you know, going inside. I mean, I don't, I don't see any water intrusion damage, obvious signs of that nature. I do know that there was not a permit pulled uh, for, for the latest roof. So no real proof for the County, uh, you know, when that, when that work was addressed, um, the AC, uh, I do not know the age. It looks pretty old just by looking at the uh, heat pump doing my walk around. Okay. Um, but it was functioning in September. Uh, she had a service September, 2023. 
So it was working at that time. She, you know, came back for the holidays, so she was living in it, but has since turned the power off. Um, yep, so the lights are off currently. Okay. Septic and well. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely a fixer-upper. Um, when was the last time the septic was pumped? Uh, she She doesn't even know. She bought the home three years ago. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see here. What is the age on this one? 1957. Any uh, any updated electrical since 1957? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> I would assume no, given that it's paneling. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So budget for a rewire. Any updated plumbing? Oh, no, it's cast iron. Okay. Okay. Any foundation issues, termite damage? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Awesome. Well, got all the info I need. Um, let me get to work on my numbers and give you a call in a little bit and let you know where I'm at. All right. Cool, man. Thanks, Nathan. I appreciate it, man. Thank you as well. Do you, do you have anything else that I should look at at the same time? I wish uh, I don't have anything currently uh, under a listing contract. I am working with some folks um, primarily up here in Nassau County on what would basically be um, either fix and flips or uh, homes probably needing renovation. Um, so yeah, man, I'll keep you in mind. Please, please do. And you know, I'll pay a little bit more if you can bring them to me off market. I'll give you a little bit higher of a commission because as soon as they have that price stamp hurts, it hurts me on the appraisal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hear you, man. I'll keep that in mind. Nathan. Thanks so much, man. Awesome. Thanks, John. Talk soon. Have a good one. I'll see you. Bye. Yeah. John's a cool guy. I like John. I'm actually going to add a note to his file that he's a cool guy. I'm going to say... John's a cool guy. Save. Okay, cool. Now we will send this to underwriting. Update. Awesome. Okay, on to the next one. Ernesto Perez Riviera. So we're just going to check it out real quick on Zillow. Sold, 12th month, 5th day, 2023. So this one is sold. So I am going to put it in the sold to others category. Okay. All right. And on to the next one, Danielle Galloway. Check it out on Zillow real quick. Okay, two story. 56 photos. Okay, looks pretty old. I'm assuming like a 1920s build. Okay. Water heater 2023, AC 2019, roof 2017. Okay, I'm going to call her. I'm going to ask specifically about like mold, termite damage, foundation issues, any of that stuff. Hi, and thank you for calling CFL Realty. Okay, I'm going to double dial her.
Hi, and thank you for calling CFL Realty Pro. Great. No answer. Sorry, we missed you. Text. Update. And my system will automatically send them a text. And then we track our KPIs. So we're at nine MLS listings called for agent conversations. Mary Kay Lickley is the next one. Okay, so this one says off market. Um, so from February 27th, off market. Now that doesn't seem right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check. Actually, you know what? Here, I can just go like this. I can go down to home details um, and I can look at the sales history. So looks like it was listed and then it was removed right away. So I'm going to come back over here. I am going to mark it as lost listing removed. Confirm. I'm gonna refresh. What's up, guys? Thanks, thanks for watching. Who's who's here with me? Give me a give me a hi in the side chat. Give me a hi. Give me a hello. Give me a sign a sign of life. I love to see who I have here with me. I get to hang. Out. You know, I'm I'm a very I'm a very blessed person. I get to hang out with friends all day long. I get to do my work with friends. I'm very very grateful. Hi, Marcella. Hi, Mark. We got Mark. We got Marcella. Who else do we have here with us? Um, we got Dennis. What's up, Dennis? Good to have you here with us. I think, Dennis, I think you sent me a text or something, um, and I have to reply to it still, but hard to it's hard to do all those things all at once while on a live stream. Um, okay, cool. So this one here, there's no photos. Um, do I want to call the agent and ask for photos? No, not really. I'm just going to abandon it and I'll call another agent instead because there's so many opportunities available. Like if you don't put photos on the MLS, good luck selling it. Um, one, four, one, five, four, one, same with this one. Why is there no photos for this one? Um, 39 days on market, no photos. What's his estimate? His estimate is 172. The fact that they're asking 180 and it's 39 days and there's no photos makes me not really interested in going after it. Okay, let's check the next one. Brandon Rhymes, Lemon Street, Tampa. I like Tampa properties. I feel like I've seen this one before. Ooh, what's up? What's up, Joshua? Okay, cool. Yeah, I've seen this one before, but I like it. I don't know if I've made an offer on it. Okay, they just say modern updates, like a tankless water heater and whatnot. Like, okay, cool. Let, let me know exactly how old the roof is, AC, water heater. All that stuff. So I'm going to call. I'm going to collect that information. has been forwarded to voicemail but okay we're gonna double dial Okay, no answer. So update our KPIs. Also, we're going to move him to the no response category, which is going to automatically send him a text. 
and we will move on to the next one. So I'm actually going to assign myself more leads since I'm running out. We've got 30 leads here. So let's assign to Nathan. Okay, Reggie says, I think I got the Zap issue figured out. Uh, Zap year was not shutting off now, and I did a test, and it is working again. Okay, awesome. Good stuff, dude. Good stuff. I'm I'm curious as to, like, what exactly it was, because I'm still a little bit confused on, like, what the issue was. But I'm glad, I'm glad that you got it working again. I'm excited for CRM 3.0, because CRM 3.0 everything's going to be in-house so it's like all going to be within the go high level platform and we won't have to use a zapier integration so um i'm pretty sure it's going to end up being cheaper to run uh plus it's going to be more efficient and you know it's going to be like plug and play so i'm, I'm really really excited for it Ooh, what's up, Carolyn? Thanks for coming over to YouTube. I'm glad that you're on YouTube. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just assigning a bunch of leads over to myself. Cool. Okay, now I have a shitload of leads. So now I'm going to switch the filter to Nathan Harris. Awesome. Now I have 14 leads ready to go. Okay, so let's open them up. Oh, Ben, Benjamin. Pronounce the names. Don't, don't capitalize the names like that, my dude. Dude, I'm going to send him a screenshot of this. Bruh. Hold on. Give me one second. I'm just. I text. Bruh. Okay. Let's stop. Okay, cool. All right. So I, I let my VA know properly punctuate the names. And the reason why is because like when it sends a message, it's gonna put their name in all caps and they're gonna be like, yo, what the fuck? Currents. Okay, there we go. All right, assign to myself. Ooh, but before we do that, let's pull it up on Zillow real quick. Investment opportunity in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, doesn't say anything about the age of the roof, AC water heater. 29 days, 983 views, 33 saves, which means that it's obviously overpriced. All right, let's call. Hey, Currents. Hello. Hey, Currents. My name is Nathan. I'm calling about that listing that you have on First Avenue. Uh, yes. Well, I was going to run my numbers on it and. Um, I realize that there's not a whole bunch of information here. I'm I'm wondering as to the age of the big ticket items like the roof, AC, water heater, if there's any major issues. Could you catch me up to speed on all of that? 
yeah, the the age of the roof is um, uh, I believe it may, man, I I I have a few listings and so I'm I'm getting mixed up, but I believe the age of the roof is like twenty eighteen to twenty years. Um, the ace there's there's nothing but window units for this for this home. And okay. so, uh, yeah. And so, but other than that, it's just, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, it, it, there's no, no other major, you know, there's not any major problems or anything where it's okay. This is, you know, it's unlivable, it's not livable or anything like that. It's just, you know, it's just an older home and, you know, uh, and, and the, the elderly man is, wants to sell and cash out. Okay. Okay. Um, so, like, no foundation issues, no mold, termite damage, none of that. Uh, no, there's no nope, none of that. None of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. you mentioned that it's an an older gentleman. Does he have a place to go afterwards, or is there anything that we can do to make this transaction better for him? Um, not really. I mean, it's uh, you know, just I mean, the best the best way to make it good for him is kind of get close, you know, as close to your number as uh as um, you know, if that makes sense for him and you, um, that's the only thing that honestly you can help him with. Mm, I wish I could. I mean, even you can even tell just by like on Zillow, how it says how many people have viewed it and saved it. You can, you can even tell that the market is feeling differently than he is. Why, why, why did he choose that number? What, what's it about that number that's important to him? Like, why did he justify it? Um, he just did a, um, you know, um, both. So there's kind of there's two units, but two livable units, separate. You know, livable units. Still one. It's one uh, address, but two separate units. And it was just a combination of the square footage based on what has sold around the area. And so uh, based on the uh, the one one apartment that's above the garage, and the uh, two one structure, main structure. That's what was put together and made and, and, and created the number. You know, he's not he's not married to the number, but he but we've already we've already turned down um, 130, 120, 100, uh, 90 thousand, and other people other stuff that people have, you know uh, you know creative finance and all that type of stuff. That stuff is just not going to work for him, work for him. That's why he hired me just to, you know to get get in the way and, and um, filter, you know, some filter decent offers to him. Okay. And this one, one above the apartment, is that fully permitted? Um, can you say that? Can you explain that? Uh, you said totally, totally permanent? Question. Yeah. Is it, is it like permitted and a, a legal apartment or what's the, uh, what's the story with that one? Uh, it's just a one-one apartment that he that he uh, built above his garage. It's on a separate uh, it's on a separate um, uh, meter, separate electric meter, separate water. Okay. Did he get permits for it? Uh, I don't I don't think so. I'm, okay. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. Yeah. So. So potentially we might have to knock it down. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, potentially. Potentially, you can knock down all the whole thing. You just build a whole new house on the land. You know, mm -hmm. that's uh that's something. Yeah, it's just, I can't really give it value unless if it was permanent, right? Because the city might force us to knock it down, so it's it's too much of a risk. Um, yeah, why would the city force you to knock it down? Because it's not permitted. Because it's an illegal addition. But why would they force you to knock it down? Just, I've hazard. never heard of that before. The, I've never seen that before. Yeah, so they can, they can argue that it's a safety hazard, as well as like we can get sued if we rent it out and um, it's not permitted. Like there's, it just opens the door to many, many problems. So I, I kind of see, I, I kind of see what's going on with this one, and it's understandable. Right? The owner sees the physical structure and he attributes value to the physical structure, but the issue is, is like without the permits. You know, lots of investors and buyers won't attribute that value to that physical structure, as well as when it goes to get appraised, they're not going to attribute the value to that physical structure as well because it's unpermitted. So I, I, I see I see what's happening here. Is is the owner aware of that or like where does he stand on that whole issue? 
Well, I guess um, I guess right now, I mean, the the price that you know we have a price, you know, and I've done a, I've done a, a several transactions with similar type of uh, structures. I mean, if we're if we're going to get an FHA or a VA loan or something like that, yes, that's going to come into place because you're going to have a lot of a lot more, um, uh, uh, you know, hands in the pot. You know, making sure that it you know it praises and this and that. But uh, you know, with conventional, and if you're going to do some, uh, you know, some hard money or anything like that, which most uh, investors would use, you know, I don't think these things come into place. It, it depends. But again, it, if it appraises at a certain point, if we get to that point, if it appraises um, at that, you know, at that price point, then we could talk about whether, you know, whether to lower the price to make, you know, get it under appraisal, but. You know, just at that at this point, you know, they're not. He's not going to sell it for ninety thousand. He's not going to give it to you. He's not going to give you the property and then pay you to take it. It's not anything like that. It's not going to happen. So, you know, it's just it's just you know, it's, if you want to do some more due diligence, you know, you can submit a uh, you know, we can you know submit a uh, an official offer and then we can you know talk a little bit more. Okay, um, so let's 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 go down this pathway right let's say i buy it for cash i i have the available funds um let's say i buy it for cash i fix it up i make it really really nice and then the next person that buys it is an end user and they're getting a loan on it and then when they go to get that loan on it they're going to notice that that's unpermitted and they're going to say i can't appraise it for the value that you know we're claiming because that's unpermitted so at the end of the day whether you sell it to a cash buyer or you sell it to an end end user, you know that's still going to be an issue. So, I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, and I, I don't want to waste your time, but I do want to at least explain to you my justification for it, so that you have something to go back to the seller with. Um, if the seller is you know caught up on attributing value to that illegal um, dwelling, then you know I don't think he's going to get this sold. But if he's willing to talk realistic numbers, understanding that. You know, there's a reason why we can't attribute value to that. Then, you know, we could potentially get an offer out and move forward on this. Do you think that it's even worth it, you know, to go back to the seller with data as like, hey, look, you know, this is not a legal addition. Um, we can't attribute value to it. But what we can give you an offer on is your house. And then, you know, we'll deal with the illegal addition. Yeah, well, I guess I guess if you were talking directly to uh, to the to the seller, this, you know, your, your points will be valid, but since you're talking to a third, a third party who's that has experience in being able to move these properties, my, my, um, you know, my concern is what my, my seller is going to get, not what the next three sellers down the road is going to get. So, I mean, so back to the bottom line is that, you know, the, um, we have a price. If you'd like to submit an offer, um, so, like, I'll, hold on, though. Know, hold I'll, on. Are you I'll suggesting that it. we should screw over the end user? Okay. Well, so hey, so um, so you, I mean, do you need my email address to be able to submit an offer? Yeah. Can you text me your email? I'll I'll run my numbers yep. and I'll submit an offer. Yeah. But I'm, okay, I mean, yeah. I, I don't want to screw over the end user. I don't think that's fair. Okay. Well, I'll text. I'll text you my email, and you can go ahead and submit an offer, and then we can go from there. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, Current. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> at the end i'm like i was i was fed up i'm like wait a minute i'm eight minutes into this call and like there's no point in arguing with him so i just flipped it on him i'm like because because he said he's like you know at the end of the day like it, i'm i'm here for my seller like i don't care about the person three down the line i'm like so are you suggesting we screw over the end user and then he, and then he's just like okay i'm like here's my email just send me an offer um he because he he walked himself into that um okay yeah so we're gonna we're gonna send this to underwriting um so it's actually a two one so i'm gonna say go on the property appraisers and confirm living s q f t and bed bath count apparently main house is two one and there is an illegal 
addition above the garage of uh, one one. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna send that to underwriting. What is your email? And I'm going to track my KPIs. Okay, cool. All right, on to the next one. Here, give me one second. I just have to use the washroom. <laughs> Boom, guess who's back? Joshua is like, Nathan's a robot. First of all, it's N-A-T-H-A-N. Um, second of all, I just had to go change my oil real quick. So, filling up on more oil now. Beep, boop. Ah. If my uh my light wasn't so bright, you'd see the bags under my eyes. Okay. He texted me the email. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, let's get to work on the next one. So Ronald is the next one. And we are going to pull Ronald up on Zillow first. Okay. Let's see all photos. Looks like it's a partially done reno. I don't know why they did the floors first. That was never wise. Okay. Okay. Let's give him a call. Help you. Hey, is this Ronald? This is not. Do you need his cell phone number? Yeah, I thought I was calling his cell phone number. What, what is his cell? His cell phone is 954-868-6881. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good one. You as well. Weird. Um, details. Yeah, okay, cool. Here, let me call him again on his cell. This is Ron. Hey, Ron, this is Nathan. I'm calling about that property that you listed on Margina Ave. Uh, yeah, did, I don't uh, have, any, have any information for you. Did you see the remarks, MLS remarks? No, I, I'm not an agent. I'm just a buyer, so I don't uh, get to see Oh, I that. apologize. 
That's okay. Um, if you call the if you call the office, they can uh, they can put you in touch with the real estate agent. Let me oh, give you that number. I thought you were the real estate agent. I'm a broker, but I'm not the agent. So let me give you the uh, the office number, and they'll put you in touch with the agent who's representing the seller of the transaction. Okay, is it the one that they, weird? Because they gave me your number. They told me call you. Who did? Uh, I some some nice sounding lady, but I don't remember her name. Okay, um, so so I'm the broker, so I have agents who work for me, and the agent one of the agents who works for me, it's their listing, so they would be able to tell you more about the property and, and, and so forth. Um, let me give you the office number. Sure. Or in fact, give me your name and number, and I'll have I'll have my staff give you a call with the contact information. How's that sound? Is it um is it the office number ending in nine six nine eight? That's correct. Yes. Okay, I'll call them back. All right, sounds good. Uh, the person who answers is either Alex or Ashley. Um, I think the person who's listing, I think it's Howard Williams, who's a listing agent. Okay, gotcha. All right, thanks, Ronald. Uh, you're welcome. Bye. Uh, friction. Friction means I abandon, right? Because it's just gonna be, it's just gonna confuse my process. So I just abandon those ones. I mean, if you're gonna overcomplicate it, you're not gonna get an offer. All right, let's look at the next one. Okay, this one is dated. It's got teal rugs. Yep, definitely a fixer-upper. <sighs> All right. Boobity bop. Hello? Hey, Sammy. My name is Nathan. I'm calling about that listing you have on Main Street. Correct. I'm still available. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, so can you just catch me up to speed? Um, I'm looking at this project and I don't really understand what big ticket items would go into it. Like, does it need a new roof, AC, water heater, anything like that? I don't have any information. No, on that. I re the AC is newer. The roof is newer. The water heater is newer. Everything else is all original. What What are the ages of those? Like, how old is the roof? I don't have it in front of me right now, but it's it's definitely newer. Could you give me a range? Because I, I had an agent tell me that newer meant seven years. No, no, it's way newer than that. Like under five years? Yeah. Okay. Same I think with 2022. I don't have the information in front of me right now. Okay. I'm on the field, so I don't. With the uh, AC and water heater, similar thing, like under five years? Correct. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't know if you, are you are you you have a buyer or you're you're the buyer. No, I would like to purchase this myself. Gotcha. Well, I don't know if you have you are you familiar with the Windermere area? Yeah. Yeah. So that house, if you fix it up and put the right materials in it, it's worth anywhere from one to one point two million. Um, uh, that's you have, how you much have I was going that justify yeah, that. Yeah, of course, of course. Okay. That's my, I grew up in that area. I know when they were like the back of my hand. Uh, that uh, that that that's what my my seller was going to do. But we had other projects that he's doing some commercial projects, so he's just going to sell it as is for right now. Mm. He's just tied up. You know what I mean? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that either that option or we're going to tear it down and build and sell uh, build a mansion there and sell it for like three four million. But, Damn, I mean, those are some pretty yeah. high numbers. I'd love to see your comps because I'm, I mean, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm not, I'm not seeing that. I'm seeing a a one million dollar property that was built in 2020, um, twelve thousand square foot lot, four three, um, literally right beside it. Um, I'm seeing a one point nine million dollar property that's four thousand eight hundred square feet built in 1999, but you know, there's just that's it's it's not. 
in and out you know the the ones that are selling for that high are like brand new properties like double triple the size yeah that's what i said that's what i said brand new we were going to do a modern with the pool on the rooftop so you could see the lake so i mean i was going to sell that all day for three four million uh, i don't mm-hmm. care what anyone tells me but i know what i could get been doing real estate 10 years so you do sound like you know what yeah. you're doing um i definitely know what i'm doing okay so, let me let I mean, me run my numbers on it let me get you some feedback at yeah right run your numbers because that's the best area that's windermere i don't know if you're familiar with that area i was where it's down the street mm-hmm. most expensive houses in uh in orlando what's it costing you right now to build like to do a luxury build because we would have to do a luxury build for this area what's the cost it depends on who you use you know what i mean as a contractor well what are you paying Oh, me? I don't. I'm not a contractor. Oh, okay. I'm a, real, I'm a real estate agent. Yeah, but when you pay your contractors to build, what are you? What are you paying them? I don't pay the contractors. My my clients do. Okay. My clients choose whoever they want to choose. You know what I mean? That's that's on your end. Whoever you want to use. Okay. Okay. So let me run my numbers because I, I'm. I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to put this one together with what you guys are asking this this price here this 70 795 like if my offer comes in significantly below that should i just move on to the next one or like where where are the sellers yeah where are you where were you thinking because we we have cash offers uh very close to list price you know what i mean why don't you take them seller doesn't want the number he wants so if my offer is not close to list price i should just move on I mean, send me an offer. Mm. I can talk to the seller for you. I don't know, bro. You know, if it's uh, if that if there's no wiggle room in that price, I don't think that's. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities out there. I don't think there's a point in getting caught up on this one. What's what's the seller willing to take on this? I mean, send me an offer, and I'll, I'll talk to him. So, if my offer came in with a six at the front of it. Will he move forward with something like that? Or yeah, don't even. Yeah, that? don't even. Yeah, don't even waste your time. Okay, gotcha. We got okay. way higher offers than that. Okay, cool. Right. Take awesome. care. Thanks, Sammy. All right, so I actually don't know for sure um, if it's going to come in with a six or not, but probably, most likely. Um, so I was looking at it on Privy, and I'm like, okay, look. So this is a 1984 property, three to 2,200 square feet. And what I'm seeing here is like brand new properties selling for a mill. Like, dude, this property right here, this brand new property, 2,600 square feet, 2020 sold for $1 million. So why can we justify this for anything that starts with a seven when a brand new property, a property that's literally 30 years newer um, and bigger and it's a corner lot um sold for significantly higher so that's why i wasn't really scared to just let that one go um because you know i i already knew that you know the numbers are most likely going to start with a six or lower plus another little hack that i have is look at right here so 61 days on zillow only 1466 views and 39 saves meaning that it's not that hot um also i mean look at this he says this won't last long yeah right dude it's been 61 days already um so not scared to move on from this one let's track our kpis and we are going to say abandoned actually you know what fuck it i'm gonna submit an offer either way I don't care. I'll submit an offer. I'll let I'll let him have my offensive offer, um, just for the sake of, I don't know, whatever. I feel like it. I feel like it. I'll let I'll let him think that I'm not going to submit an offer, and then I'm going to call him and I'm going to say, "Hey, um, you willing to come down on that?" Yes. Okay. Ramey says, I wonder how he even sells his properties. I, uh, yeah, that, that kind of an attitude makes it, um, challenging for people to work with you. Okay. Anyways, on to the next.
Um, you know what? Let me tell my underwriter, hey, bro, I'm doing a live right now and I got to get these offers out. So can you bang out my underwriting complete category? Let me send him a message at Alvin. Can you bang out my MLS under writing real quick? I'm on a live. Okay, cool. So next one we have is Erica. All right, let's take a look at this one on Zillow real quick. <laughs> Galaxy Big Bird. Galaxy. Okay, I got to know who is Galaxy Big Bird? Like who who has that tag? I I, I love the tag. I keep thinking on thinking of like Big Bird from uh Sesame Street, but like Galaxy Big Bird. It's really cool. Um Galaxy Big Bird says, "Jesus Christ, these agents are brutal. How do you not let them throw you off? They're just on the defensive, you know? They're just scared. They're on the defensive, you know." Like, yeah, they're just, you know, protective and scared. It's no biggie. They don't, they don't know how to be calm. They, you know, they're just thinking emotionally rather than rationally. So I just, I just try to focus and think emotionally or sorry, I try to think rationally, not emotionally. Okay. So let's see here. So the single family home, yada, yada, yada. Um, this home features central air conditioning, forced air heating, um, and a mansard roof that was rebuilt in 2018. Yeah, that's not very descriptive. Uh, let me call them and get confirmation. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. For We're going to double dial her. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic. Hey, no answer. So we're going to switch her to the no response category, and that's going to automatically send her a text. Then we are going to update our KPIs. Oh, we forgot to update our KPIs for the last guy. Okay, cool. We just did that. Um, and now I would like to start getting some offers out. So um, first thing we have is we have Lance. Our offer for Lance would be um, 276 land value. What is this property going for on the market? Let me check it. Four ninety nine is what it's going for on the market. Um, so we will offer two seventy six land value because I don't give a fuck. That's my offer. I don't give a shit what you listed it for. I'm gonna make my offer. That's what you want. That's not what you'll get. Okay, so um, we are going to use my offer template. Offer template. Use template. Cool. Now let's just plug and play with the information. So property address, boom, purchase price. Two seventy six minus our assignment fee would be 266, um, EMD, 5,000, cool. And I will email it, offer for property address, and I will attach my proof of funds, POF,
send. And then I will send him a text. Hey, Lance. I just sent you my offer for four seven two nine jackfish. And then I will move him to the offer submitted category. Cool. Awesome. That's an offer submitted and that's a written offer. Okay. Now we are going to, um, and I'm also going to send him a message. Did you get it? Okay. And then we're going to move on to James Nagy. And let's see, because James was like, James was like, move on. Uh, there's not much wiggle room. So let's see. Wholesale price, 297 What is the list price on this one? 339 Oh, okay. Not bad. We're not too far off. All right. Let me, uh, I'm going to send him an email. I'm going to use my offer template. Offer template. Address. This is like the easiest part. Purchase price. We're going to go 287 because we want to make money. Okay, EMD. Um, 287, we'll give them three grand. Okay, and then we're going to email that to him. Offer for property address. We're going to attach my POF. POF. Boom. Hey, James. Why did it not go through? The email you tried does not exist. Please try again. Uh, double checking for spelling mistakes. Hey, James, here is my offer. Do you want me to email this to you? We'll just send it via text since his email address is not going through. And we will mark him as offer submitted. And we will refresh. Okay, cool. We have John. John has been completed now. Um, so we are now going to reach out to John and make our offer. Um, so let's take a look at this one on the market. Let's see what they're asking. So they are asking $130,000 on the market. John was really, really respectable. I like John. Um, and what we are going to offer on it is we are going to offer, we are not going to buy it. Um, it just doesn't make sense. Um, so I'm going to respectfully decline. So I'm going to call John and I'm going to say, Hey, John, you know, this one just doesn't look like it would make sense. Um, we would lose money on this one, but it's nice to give them feedback. You want to be, you want to be polite. Hey, this is John. Hey, John, it's Nathan. What's going on, man? Hey, so I ran the numbers on Ronnie Street, and um, you're not going to like my news. So I'm going to pass on this one, and the reason why is. You know, it just it wouldn't make sense. We would we would lose money on it. The seller would practically have to give it away. Um, but I wanted to leave you with some feedback at least. Do you, do you want me okay. to text you my numbers or do you want me just to let you know them verbally? No, you can just let me know. Okay, so we're we're expecting an ARV of around ninety five thousand, and just given the age of the property and how much work needs to be done to it, it's going to be about seventy eight thousand dollars in repairs. Um, we're pretty much going to have to do a full gut, uh, full rewire, plumb, everything, um, and just 
after that, you know, there's just nothing really left in it. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it, man. Mm -hmm. No worries, dude. Um, that's why I like dealing with investors. They're they're the logical ones. <laughs> <laughs> the numbers don't work, man. The numbers don't work. Yeah. Um, I've I've had such discussions with the seller. Um, you know, so trying to be a good agent here, but totally understand, man. So I appreciate your time today, Nathan. My pleasure. I pre you know, I, I was saying to my partner, my partner, um, he was overhearing it and I was saying, you know, I really like John. John John's different. He's a very respectable guy. There's a lot of agents that, you know, they just get all defensive and get upset when you give them data driven feedback. But I'm like, you know what? Even though this is not for me, I gotta call John <laughs> and I gotta let him know. That way he has something to work with. I appreciate that, Nathan. Thanks so much, man. And I am, you know, relaying all of this feedback to the seller. So, um, no, it definitely helps. I'm a data-driven guy too. So, um, I mean, I've, I've priced lumber recently, and it's it's not where I'd like it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally get it, man. Thanks for your time, Nathan. Thank you as well, John. Have a great day. All right, you too. All right, yeah. see you. Cool. I'm actually gonna just slip John on the follow-up campaign. Um, basic follow-up. And I'm going to check in with him later on and see if he has any deals. So that's going to be a verbal offer. That's going to be a verbal decline pretty much. Um, so we're going to add him to the decline category, but we're not going to let him get followed up with because there's like absolutely no point in following. So we're going to add him to the decline category, um, but we're going to turn off the follow up on this property because there's no point in following up on uh, something that's like beyond realistic. So there we go, added him um, and also removed him from the follow-up. Okay, cool. So two verbal offers, one written. Um, did I did I check the last offer that I made? Um, let's see here, recent. Oh, here, hold on. Um, okay, so James was a no. Um, John was, I called him and I said, no, Robert was a no. Okay, so I'm missing one here. So we're just gonna pop one more on there. Yep, that's right now. Okay, cool, back to opportunities. All right, now come on, come on, Alvin. We need more underwriting. I have three minutes and I have to get two more offers out, but they're just sitting in underwriting. They're not even done yet. Okay, while we're waiting for Alvin to underwrite, we're gonna call some more listings. Just gonna pull this one up on Zillow real quick. Take a look at it. Pink walls, yellow walls, boob lights, dated bathrooms. Yellow tub. I can I can go over these things so quickly. Um, leafless gutters installed 2021, new roof 2021, flat roof installed 2018 and 2017. So I'm gonna add that to the deal card and I am going to call, sign it to myself, and ring a ding ding. You have reached Amanda Weiss with Cobalt Banker Realty. I am not available to answer. You're going to double dial. Hello, you have reached Amanda Weiss with. Okay, no answer. So we are going to put her on the. Uh, no response category and update our KPIs. So we have about a 50% uh, answer rate today, which is not too bad. Um, grab deal card. We're going to check this one out on Zillow. Age of the roof, AC water heater. Sent this home has had some updates over the last, including, um, okay, cool. 
Um, we're going to add that to the deal card. Okay, then we're going to call her. So it looks like Angie is assigned to Ernesto, but there's no communication history on it. So I take her back. Good afternoon. This is Angie. Hey, Angie. This is Nathan. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I'm calling about that property that you listed on Julie Lane. Yes. I'm interested in buying it for myself. I just wanted to get a better idea of what's going to go into this project before I start running my numbers. Do you have a moment? Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. So I noticed um, we have new new roof, AC, water heater all within the past five years. A um, couple of things that I'm I'm un, unsure about is the pool when when that was last resurfaced. Um, if there's any major issues with the property, foundation issues, mold, termite damage, could you just kind of catch me up to speed on those aspects of it? Sure. I'm not sure when the last uh, time the pool was resurfaced. Um, the house itself, um, you know, appears to be in good, solid foundation condition. You know, no issues, anything like that. It's mainly cosmetics. Um, you know, could really use a good paint job, especially on the interior. Um, it's got carpet, you know, really needs to be taken out. Um, you know, new flooring installed. There's a couple walls that, that just because of the age of the home is a bit compartmentalized. Okay. Um, where I think if you took out a couple of walls, it would make a huge difference as long mm. as they're, you know, just cosmetic and not load bearing or anything like that. But it was just the nature of that era, you know, of construction. Of course, yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, those are the main things. It's, um, it's got a huge screened patio in the pool area. I mean, it's a big piece of property. Are um, all those screens, um, like they're, they're not full of tears or anything like that. What's, what's the quality of those screens? One, like? I went over there a couple months ago and there was one area where it looked like maybe a raccoon had gotten in and there was, um, animal excrement in the pool. So I think maybe there might yeah. be a raccoon uh, swimming in the pool at night. <laughs> um, but that's the only area that I saw. There's in this green patio area, there was an extra like four by four that the owner had placed there. And it seemed kind of out of place. And I asked him about it. And he said he only put it in because he was standing on top of the screen enclosure, like blowing off leaves and everything. And so he just put it there as a support. Um, okay. you know, as, like a, as a temporary measure, but I, cause that was the one question that I had. I wasn't sure about that. Okay. Um, but yeah, it means mainly just cosmetics. It's, you know, it needs to be cleaned. It needs, it could really use some updates like flooring and paint. And, you know, like I said, if it were me, I'd be figuring out how to take out a couple of the walls to open it up a little bit. I think that's a really good idea. I agree with you. Um, okay. And is this property currently occupied vacant? Um, it is, uh, check the MLS. I would prefer to say it that way. <laughs> oh, I'm not an agent, so I don't get the private remarks. Oh, okay. Well, I don't give out that information over the phone. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I just wanted to know, like, you know, if we need an extended closing, you know, what our access would be like if we were to walk it, do we schedule an appointment? Do we just go in on lockbox? Um, it is. Yeah, it does have an electronic lockbox on there. So, um, you know, if you're not an agent, though, you wouldn't have access to the lockbox, right? No, no, I would have to bring an agent with me. Right, right. Okay, okay, all right. Well, let me get to work on my numbers, and I'll see if this is something we we want to submit an offer on. How sure. Would... I mean, I'll say it. Go ahead. It's a nice piece of property. Um, you know, it's the neighborhood's nice. It's got some beautiful oak trees on the property. I mean, it's really nice. <laughs> it's been you know maintained in the sense that. You know, anything that needed that needed to be done has been done. You know, the owner, you know, didn't spare any expense. He got the roof done. He got the air conditioning done. You know, um, he didn't just Band-Aid stuff. But the interior is really, you know, where it just could use some love. I agree. I think this would look really good after it's done up. The, the only concern that I have, and I, I'm, I'm sure you're getting feedback from people as well, is it's a bit of a high asking price. Is there a reason why the seller chose that number? Well, I mean, obviously, this is their primary asset. And so every person, you know, is going to try and get the most money that they can for their primary asset. 
um, you know, and the market's going to speak, you know, whether or not he can get close to his asking price or not. Um, there are comps that support it, but obviously comps are looking in the rearview mirror. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's basically just looking for an offer and he's trying to get the most money he can, you know. Okay. Okay. Well, let me run my numbers. Let me see what's the, what's the best that I can do on it. Okay. Thanks, Sandy. Sounds good. I'll, I'll call you soon with an offer, okay? Okay, thanks. Right. Bye-bye. Take care. Cool. Okay. All right, let me send this to underwriting. And let me update my KPIs. Okay, now let's see if more of them are out of underwriting. Or do I have to underwrite some of them myself? Oh, nope, there we go. One of them is out of underwriting. Awesome. So this one here, we would need it for five seventy nine. dollars Remember, this was Sammy. This was the agent that was being a bit of a dick. Um, so let's take a look at it. He wants $7.95. Um, and the best that we can do on this is $5.79. Um, so I'm just going to submit an offer. I'm going to send it over text. Um, and he can just deal with it. But I should send it with love. Send it with love, Nathan. Be nice. He will have our offer available to provide to the seller. 579. So we're going to go 569, comma, 000. zero, zero. Um, EMD, 6,000. Here is my offer. Boom. Okay. All right. And then we will add him to the um, to the offer submitted category, and that'll automatically follow up with him the next day to see if um, we get an acceptance counter or decline. We're going to add that to our offer submitted. And then Mr. Alvin, come on, Alvin, we need, we need more. We need more properties underwritten. I don't want to have to underwrite them myself. Fuck it. I'll underwrite them myself though. I'm not going to wait for you, Alvin. Um, okay. So we are going to pull it up on Zillow as well as we are going to pull it up on privy okay so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to do a quick privy comp oh yeah this one was the one where we had to check the property appraisers website uh, yeah and because i'm a canadian i don't know why but duval county property appraisers website won't let me access it access it from canada so it's like hella funny so i mean i guess if i comped it it I would still I would still run into the issue of like having the property appraisers website properly load and it wouldn't properly load. So I'm not gonna get too um too caught up on it. I will do I wanna keep going? I mean I'm at four offers. Um ah, I'm a I'm gonna call it a show. Uh we put out four offers in the past hour and 39 minutes. Um, so we're, do, we're doing pretty good. I mean, we have two in underwriting right now. They'll come out shortly, and I can get those offers out in no time. So it's it's really not too hard, guys. Don't overcomplicate it. Um, but, yeah, appreciate you, and I will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Wholesaler Horror Stories. That one's going to be really cool. It's going to be like a campfire where we get around a campfire and we tell horror stories of crazy deals and whatnot. All right, appreciate you guys, and I'll see you later.